YB stays on your neck. <laughs> Yo, my dons, make sure you hit that like button, comment, subscribe, and obviously hit the bell for notifications. Wow. Wow. Those men who follow the channel, you'll know that I put a video out predicting Dave shot Dave Chinny Price against Dave the White Rhino Allen. And I've got to put my hands up. I made the statement that if I could invest in any fighter, in any up and coming fighter, I would have been all in on Dave Allen. That was the facts of it, truth. I would have been all in, 100%. And after seeing that fight, I was wrong. I've told you one before, people think I'm lying. When I'm wrong, I'm wrong. My hands go up. I was wrong about Dave Allen. Now, assuming there's nothing going on in the in the pre-fight, but assuming, actually no, scrap that. There was nothing wrong in the pre-fight. He was fine through the build-up, looked fine, acted fine. Everything was dandy. People are saying, oh, well, he might have broke his eye socket. Yeah, that's the fight. He didn't break his eye socket by himself. Dave Price, to his credit, punched his eye socket broken. Dave Allen's been in there with Ortiz, didn't get his eye socket broken. So that's to Dave Price's credit. And people are saying Dave Allen quit. I don't know. I don't know about that. I can see Dave Allen on the oxygen there. Allegedly, Dave Allen's gone on to make some retirement claims now, talking about how he's probably done. But we know Dave Allen. He's an up and a down kind of guy. He'll take some time off and he'll be back, in my opinion. And in, in a way, I actually feel... I'm going to break the fight down in a minute, but I'll just quickly get, get this on my mind. But I actually feel like this is a bit of karma for Dave Allen. Because when, when AJ lost, the Lord works in mysterious ways. When AJ lost, Dave Allen was out saying, AJ quit. AJ quit. Yeah, he quit. He did this. He did that. He loved it. He was the one of the main ones who came out. He was the first one out to talk about how AJ quit. He couldn't wait. And that's why people say to be humble. Because now, Dave Allen, <laughs> you're a quitter. You're the one who jacked. Yeah, bottom line, whatever way you want to cut it, you jacked. And let's get it straight. Dave Price ain't no ain't no Revus either. Dave Price ain't no Revus. You was in there with a man who shot to pieces. You was in there with a man, you've only got to hit him with something half sharp, and he would have fell over. And you quit against the guy who's no good. <laughs> AJ quit against a solid guy who you who you yourself admitted you couldn't beat. So let's call a spade a spade now, Dave. You now have to deal with being called a quitter, and that's that. Anyway. Now, the, now Dave Allen's felt the karma. Bottom line is, Dave Allen got too gassed off himself. And I can't even blame Dave, blame Dave Allen because I got gassed off him as well. The way I was looking at it was, well, he's been in there with Ortiz. He's been in there with Dylan White. And he wasn't even fit. But what comes to pass now is, fit or not, he didn't really use that fitness. He really didn't. I, d I don't know what he was doing in that fight. And I said myself, there needs to be head movement. But it wasn't much of anything in there. I'm really not sure what his game plan was. Anyway, let's get to I've wrote For this fight, out of all the fights I watched, I watched the Jezora fight, the White fight, the Furman fight, and the Dave Allen fight. I, I, Like I said, I was invested in Dave Allen. I wrote the most notes for this Dave Allen fight. So let's get on with it. The first thing I wrote was, Dave Allen sitting back too much. Trying to jab with Price. He was talking like he was Mike Tyson, but showed no aggression. And that's the facts of it. In the fight, I was gassed. My cock was rock hard when he was talking about, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna knock, I'm gonna knock Dave Allen out." <laughs> I can't do, I can't do the voice. I'm from Sheffield. I'm gonna knock Dave Allen out. I don't know what voice it is. Bottom line is, yeah, he was talking about his knocking. Sorry, he's, he was talking about he's gonna knock Dave Price out in the first round. He said he'd be disappointed. He was getting me gassed, Mike Tyson style. Yeah. Getting me gassed. Yeah, um, if it's not done, if it's not done within three rounds, I'm gonna be depressed. If if it's not done within one round, I'll be shocked. If if it's not done within two rounds, I'll, I'll be I'll be annoyed with myself. When you talk that way, people don't realise. Mike Tyson and people like that, they talk like that. Even even McTappa, people talk like that. It's not only it's not a, people forget this. Like Jarrell Pig, Baby Miller, like Fury, Fury does as well. They all do it. People think it's not just words. When you talk something, you have to go into the ring with that mindset. One round knockouts don't just come. The minute you get past region, in fact, the minute you get past regional level, if you want to beat people who are British level or world level, you have to come in there with a devastating mindset. Dave Allen, he's fought a few bums, yeah? Nick Webb, come on. He, beat, he, beat, he knocked Nick Webb out in the fifth round after a war. He knocked Nebo out. He knocked... A top 500 fighter out in the first round. And that got him gassed. He started believing he had power. 
thinking he could just waltz into the ring and get knockouts of us British level people. Unfortunately, Dave Allen, you found out the hard way. You've got to go in there with a nasty mindset. I didn't see that from Dave Allen tonight. He seemed contempt to just sit back and just just he just glide through it as if as if a knockout was going to come out of fresh air. So in, in reality, Dave, I thought I thought Dave Allen's mindset had changed. It hasn't changed. He's the same old Dave Allen. Goes in there and just kind of cruises and, and, and hopes his luck changes. In the Nick in the Nick Webb fight, his luck came through. And I feel what God's done for Dave Allen is God gave Dave Allen an opportunity. He brought him back through the Webb fight. He brought him back through the um, Lucas Brown fight. And this Dave Price fight was his to take. But instead, he sat back and tried to wait for luck to come through. Try and, and when, when I say luck, it was literally luck because he kept winging this big overhand right, which he caught Nebo with and he caught Webb with. He kept he kept winging it against Dave Price, and unfortunately, Nebo and Webb they're not as tall. Dave Price, to be fair to him, he's a silver medalist at amateurs. He's schooled. You're not going to catch him with a big overhand sloppy right. And he's six foot six or six foot nine. I've ta I've said this before. Dave Allen's like six foot one. When you're fighting people who are, who are eight inches taller. That they have a bird's eye view. They can see that big looping right hand coming f from last week. You can't get that. You can't get these regional level shots off against David Price. And I thought they they were talking about our oh, head movement. I've seen Dave Allen. I've seen Dave, Dave Allen on the pads, and pads don't count. But I've seen him on the pads, and ringing, ringing combinations in, slipping, sliding. That's what I thought we were going to see. I honestly thought we were going to see the way he was talking. I thought we were going to see a Mike. Tyson like performance slip 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 and banging on the inside instead he came out trying to jab with Dave Price one of the things Dave Price has does well is jab he's long he's six for eight Jesus but good jab and a good right hand that's what he does what are you doing sitting at mid-range with him and then the worst thing was whenever Dave Allen did get on the inside He'd, he'd put a Sean Porter and start smothering his work you'd see him on the inside just like half it was crazy there being like half a clinch, and he'd be trying to hit him in the clinch. Like, what's that? When I say hit him, I mean he'd be trying to like slap. There were slaps. He was slapping Dave Allen. Like Dave Price, sorry. Dave Allen was slapping Dave Price. I thought, save your energy. Get mid range. Get in that little mid range little pocket where you got a good bit of distance, and then start banging him with the hooks. And that's what Mike. That's what people don't realize as well. That's what Mike Tyson did really well. Mike Tyson understood range. Too many fighters, Sean Porter, Dave Allen, they they smother their work. Standing way too, he was too close to him, way too close. He needs to take a quarter step back and just get that. Mike Tyson always did it well. He'd always position his feet well, so he, so his shots would get maximum leverage. Dave Allen was on top of his target and just smothering. Them, them hooks looked shocking. They were all arms. Slaps they were. Weren't hurting no one. Not even, not, listen, we know for a fact Dave Price is begging. His chin literally sits there singing. For someone to touch it. You don't have to do a lot. <laughs> Let's call a spade a spade here. You do not. It's known. It's in fact Dave Price is world renowned as the guy. You ain't got to do much to get him out of there. And unfortunately, Dave Allen didn't even have that. Slaps they were. He was on the inside slapping. It was not a good show, man. I, I was expecting some Mike Tyson thing. We got we got a Dave Allen special there. Slapping on the inside. Very embarrassing. Very embarrassing after you talk that good stuff. Got me gas. How are you going to get the YB gas like that and go in there with that kind of performance? Sitting back like you was some, like you was seven feet tall. Dave Allen was boxing in there like he was 20 foot tall. Yeah? Smothering his work. No banging. There was no making it count either. Bear in mind he was sitting back all the time. The very few times he did get on the inside. No, he wasn't doing nothing. He wasn't doing no damage. Slaps. Slaps and, it's, it's, and this, this weird uppercut he's got. It's like a weird... There's no leverage on the uppercut. Mike Tyson would get there and he'd, he'd find leverage. Dave Allen was... It was all arms. It was all army. No good. No good. He's been exposed. And like I say, I feel like, I feel like it's a true... Karma is served cold. And that's what Dave Allen's got here. Ended up on the, on the, on the gas machine. Yeah? Ended up on the oxygen machine. That's what we do know. My man oxygened out. Facts. Dave Allen punched the oxygen clean out of him. Sorry, Dave Price punched the oxygen clean out of Dave Allen after he talked all that good stuff. Very embarrassing. And I, 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 like I said, I was wrong. I called it wrong. Everyone who was supporting Price, fair play to you. I wasn't. Dave Allen, massive, massive, a massive matchroom hype job. I'm sorry, he is. He's had all the chances. He's had. Listen, Dave Allen's had more chances than I've had hot, hot meals, hot, hot lunches, mate. Yeah, facts. Had, he's had, he had all the chances. And now he's been given a platform and he hasn't taken it. He was too he was too relaxed. 
too relaxed, thinking it was gonna thinking you can fight European level people and just get a knockout out of nowhere with a, with a sloppy overhand right. Very disappointing. Um, my next point was there were, Dave Allen. There was no using higher IQ. Now what I mean by that is this: in that Lucas Brown fight, we saw we saw the starting of some good IQ, meaning he. He slipped. He slipped off whatever shot. I forgot what it was. I think he slipped. I think he slipped the right hand and banged the left hook to Lucas Brown's body. Beautiful stuff. I thought we were going to see an extension of that, where Dave Allen went into this fight, and Dave Allen spent a lot of time gassing up his trainer. So I thought his world championship level trainer was going to come in and say, you know what? Look, I've looked at Dave Price. I've written down three or four shots I think can land. Let's work on how we can set them up. Does that make sense? Okay, whenever they, whenever Dave Price throws a left, right hook, right hand, we're gonna do this and do that. That's what I thought was coming. I thought they were building up the IQ. What IQ did we see tonight? Did we see any st stepping in and uh, did we see any slipping and banging? No. Didn't uh, uh, didn't, didn't see squat. Barely saw any head movement. Never mind stepping in. Never st did we see any counter punching? No. Basic, straight up and down. Dave Allen, very disappointed. And I'm not being funny. His cardio didn't look much better. I don't get it. It seems to me Dave Allen's card after not training all them years, he looked as he looked as bad as he did then. What's the point in training if you're gonna be just as gassed? But then again I question what these guys are doing in training. He's probably sitting on the bike, if I'm honest. He's probably running and sitting on the bike. That's why he runs out of gas. Um what else have I got on here? Yeah, I've written down Allen, AJ Karma. Um Yep, yeah, I've noticed a lot as well. He kept run Dave Allen kept running in and then hugging. Keep trying to clinch. I'm thinking, bro, you ain't gonna win on the outside. Tall fighters, their main game, their main strategy against smaller fighters is to tie them up. Why is Dave Allen tying Dave Dave Price up for? What's that about? That them few times you got on the inside, literally the last thing you should be doing is tying Dave Price up. The fact that Dave Allen was looking to tie Dave Price up said to me everything. Said to me he knew he was losing the fight. That doesn't make no sense. When you're on the inside, there are the times you've got to work. Because you ain't going to win on the outside. Chances are. I just didn't understand that at all. It seemed to me like they had no they had no real strategy. It felt to me like Dave, Dave Allen was going in there just assuming he was going to win. There was no real strategy there. Once again, what one thing can we take from that fight which Dave Allen did well? What one thing? Nothing in there. I've got to give Dave Price the credit. He came in there composed. Still holds, but I saw a little shoulder roll there. His shoulder roll looked better than AJ's did, to be fair. At least Dave Price got his actual shoulder up to protect his chin. So he looked all right in there. Still got a few holes there, but he looked he did what he had to do, bottom line. He did what he had to do. And I thought the fight was actually a lot closer than it was. People were saying, or the um, reporters were saying, or the, the people on the commentators were saying that, oh yeah, Dave Price is winning this clearly. I don't think it was that clear. I thought it was a pretty even fight. But yeah, Dave Price obviously won it in the end anyway, but... It wasn't that, he wasn't doing that much, Dave Price wasn't. Dave Price needs to be more active. He got lucky. People were talking about Dave Price fixed his conditioning. He got lucky that Dave Allen didn't really come and pressure. And that's why I'm frustrated with Dave Allen again. Why wasn't he pressuring him? Fair enough. Okay, you want to throw them slappy arm shots. That's fine. At least get on the inside and keep throwing them. Dave Allen was just sitting back. Let him, as, as if he expected Price just to run out of gas standing there. Come on. You've got to put him under pressure. There was no pre yeah, there was no pressure. He should have been, Dave Allen should have been constantly coming forward. Stepping in, slipping. Stepping in, slipping. If you got a hold every time, fine. But make, Dave Price, Dave Allen should have forced Dave Price to be the one holding. Instead, the minute you see Dave Allen holding, you know there's something wrong. Something's gone fundamentally wrong here. Um, the next thing. Yep, sloppy overhand. No variability. Yeah, meaning... He, he throws this, in fighting, you want to mix it up. Because in a fight, Dave Price, being, having, being a well-schooled amateur guy, being a well-schooled professional with experience, when you throw the same shot again and again, Dave, Dave Price can work that DNA out. He knows what angle it's coming at. Therefore, he knows to, slip, to catch his hand or parry his hand in the same direction every time. You've got to mix it up. You've got, you've got to change the angle. You've got to throw a hooky overhand or whatever. You've got to do something different. Straighten it up. I don't know, try, try to do something different. He kept winging it over. It clearly wasn't working. It was Deontay Wilder versus Tyson Fury special there. Very, very basic stuff again. I wonder what these coaches are training. Surely this coach would have seen that overhand right and said, you know what, let's build a few variations on that. Next part anyway, um, 
I put smother in, no power, or combinations. Yeah, he threw a few combinations, but like I said, Dave Allen's combinations were slappy. There weren't no power on them. You really got to... People don't realise, when Tyson used to fight people, he would hit people's arms and hands and whatnot and gloves. But they'd feel it. That's the whole point. With Tyson didn't even have to find an opening. He'd bang you so hard to your arms that he'd end up creating one. You can actually punch through people's defence if you've got enough power. But Dave Allen wasn't, it's not even about he didn't have power, he wasn't punching properly. He was punching, he was doing arm punches. When, when, when you throw hooks, you almost want to, you want to almost pull your body, pull your body through the shot. Whereas Dave Allen was sitting there, not using his body, he was just winging his arms. And you'd see it, because you'd see his head wasn't moving. When he was throwing hooks, his head would be straight in front of, um, straight in front of Dave Plus. You kind of want to pull, you want to pull your head into it. And when you see Mike Tyson throw hooks, you'll see Mike Tyson sometimes, literally, end up 90 degrees in the other angle. Or, yeah, you'd see Dave, Dave, um, sorry, you'd see Mike Tyson's body literally move 90 degrees when he throws his hooks. You'd see him literally, his whole body would move, would pivot almost. That's what you got to be doing. Dave Price, Dave Allen weren't doing that, sorry. He was just slapping. All you'd see move was his arms, no power. Who's, who's going to, who's going to worry about that? Very basic. Once again, the coaching, though, what, what are the trainers doing? Oh, yeah, oh, there's an ex-world champion. Well, where was the ex-world champion there, then? Basic stuff. No power. If you're going to be a small heavyweight, you've got to be powerful in, in throwing combinations, which Dave Allen didn't do neither of them. The next thing was, and the last thing, sorry, was, yeah, just in summary, Dave Price had good pacing and solid defence, but ultimately, it was because Dave Allen didn't pressure him. And he, he just, he, I think he got too gassed. And hearing how Dave Allen was speaking before the fight, on hindsight now, it was 100% true. Dave Allen got too gassed. The things he was commenting about AJ... He honestly started feeling himself too much. Stop talking about Povetkin. He got he got too gas, and it's a shame because he, he oh well, I don't know. I'm not going to say what he could have been, but I thought he could have been something. I'm not so sure now. He seems like a big big mouthpiece now. He's good at talking a good talk, but he don't ever walk it. Before it was the training. Now he's fully trained, so you got no excuse. What are your excuses time then? And I've heard he talk about retiring. I don't know, man. I'm I'm not impressed with the trainer. I'm not impressed with Dave Allen on this one. Not good.